this Saturday, October the 12th, and this is the first day I've been in the stand since I shot that buck earlier in the week. Uh, we couldn't recover him. Blood trail just tapered off to nothing after about 400 yards, 450 yards, and there were three of us there tracking him. You know, we gridded the area for a body. Uh, we didn't grid the corn, but the corn schedule would come off here probably in the next week. But the consensus was it wasn't a fatal shot and he's still alive. Today it's 50 degrees out. We had a cold front come through with a bunch of rain last night. Uh, pretty breezy, probably 50 mile an hour winds. There's stuff coming down all around me. I'm in a grove of red oaks and there's a lot of acorns on the ground already. Um, sitting over a mineral lick. This stand, uh, my nephew killed a buck out of it last weekend. Um, so it's a hot stand right now. Don't expect a lot tonight, but we'll see what happens. I don't think I'm gonna shoot a doe, but you just never know what's gonna happen. It might just get on your nerve and you might do it anyway. <laughs> um, if a good buck comes in, I'm probably gonna let him have it. Really don't feel like that other one's dead. Um, I feel feel like we gave it a really good effort, and we don't think he's dead. Uh, I don't like the idea of shooting more than one buck in a year here in Ohio, but that's the best opportunity I've had in eight years. So if I get another one tonight or later this season, I'm gonna try to capitalize on it. I didn't see much that afternoon. Just a pair of button bucks working over a buck tracks mineral lick. I did, however, have a new buck show up on camera. A possible shooter. It is October the 25th. It's about 5.30 and it's about 55 degrees out. Dropping pretty quick in temperature. I'm in a, a, a tree stand I've never been before. It's on a fence row. It's a good, good scrape line along here, overlooking a cornfield that was planted this spring. It was really wet, and the corn is just horrible. It's like a nightmare for crops. Um, it's mostly a foxtail field, but I can see into it really well. And the deer have good cover in there. Um, there's a bunch of acorns right here. I've already had a run into a button buck at like 20 yards. So they're going to be on top of me before I even know it in here, so I'm going to turn the camera off and we're going to see what happens. I spot a young 10 point following a doe in the cornfield, working in my direction. I am not certain of the size of the buck as I can only get glimpses of his rack through the foxtails in the corn. As dark approaches, the pair get within 30 yards of me in a thick portion of the fence row. I point the camera at my shooting lane and wait. He never offers a shot, nor a clear look at his headgear. After sorting through some trail camera photos, I ID the buck in question. Thankfully, he didn't present a shot. I don't trust my willpower. Well, it is the 27th of October. We're back in the same sand we were in two nights ago. Just had a big 
front come through for the last day and a half. Dumped about an inch and a half of rain, a lot of wind, and uh, starting to wind down the wind right now. So we lost a lot of color from our leaves, but uh, there's still quite a bit on. Um, saw a pretty good buck here the other night. These borderline shooters at 10 points. Since took a look at my trail camera photos, there's some good bucks in this on this fence line. Um, one's an absolute giant, but uh, I don't think we're gonna be picky enough to wait for him. There was another really nice buck, uh, possibly two. I didn't really get a look at all the pictures. Um, Let's see what happens tonight. sure if we have some overly excited younger bucks or does that are cycling early. I'm going to go with overly excited younger bucks. I just saw a buck chasing a doe or two or three does. Probably a doe and two fawns, I suppose, a couple hundred yards away. He looked like he had decent beams, but uh, he was pretty short on the tines. But uh, it was going on here two days ago, too. Different buck chasing. So he wasn't really chasing. He was just kind of following, maybe annoying, grunting at her. That was the one that came like 30 yards from me, but never gave a shot. Um, I don't know. I'll try to get them on video. Oh, they are working this way quite a bit closer, so we'd already closed the distance a couple hundred yards, so we'll turn the camera around so we can see. These are actually detour bucks. I didn't see that one. As legal light drew near, the wind died down, and the deer were all around me. Two young bucks were sparring behind me in an age-old ritual. Well, it's the 2nd of November, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's about 45 degrees out and 15 mile an hour winds. Uh, might be slightly underdressed for a day. We'll see. Uh, sitting in a fence row, seeing a lot of activity from here. But the corn was on. They just took the corn off here this past week. It's the first time I've been able to get out since then. Hoping for a cruising buck. I uh, reviewed some trail camera footage here the last few days from this fence row, and uh, it was a hot place to be a month ago. So. I don't know about now so much, but I know there's big ones in the area. Um, all the crops around this two mile section are off. So hopefully they're just cruising through here. I know this is a really good deer area. Uh, a lot of the landowners around, landowners around here are managing for deer. So hopefully we'll get lucky and uh, we'll score on a big one tonight. We'll see. Well, it's five o'clock and uh, looks like we're gonna get wet. It really stinks because I didn't bring my rain gear or any kind of weather protection for the camera. So, that's awesome. Really my first night um, testing out sicker gear in a Ohio whitetail situation during archery season. I'm really liking it. Um, I should be cold. But because of the wind stopping my Stratus jacket and pants, I'm not. Stuff's awesome. 
it's outrageously expensive, but it's it's good stuff. I mean, I saw another guy walk in across the field of this other woods. He was dressed in Carhartt bibs and a Carhartt coat and a face mask. Um, I mean, I have my hood up when I'm not talking to the camera, but other than that, I've got a fanatic uh, hoodie on, a Stratus jacket, just Stratus pants. I have a t-shirt on underneath, muck boots. That's it, that's all I'm wearing. I'm a little nervous about the weather though. I hope I don't get wet, but I'm afraid I'm going to. Uh, we'll see what happens. Wow. <sighs> to avoid the deluge, I ran over to the treehouse, which is about 225 yards away. Um, while I was there, deer started popping out of the woods like crazy. And one of the deer I saw was the biggest buck I have on camera this year. He's tall. And I couldn't get my lenses changed fast enough to get my big lens on to film him. But he's tall. He checked the does out that came out of the woods and went into the woods. He came out of our CRP field. So I know it's a great bedding area for him. They love that area. But it's pretty much impossible to hunt. Um, We've taken a couple of good ones out of there before. Uh, I like snuck up on them, see them from an elevated tree stand, and then sneak up on them with guns during gun season. But uh, I don't know. that uh, There were deer between my stand and where I was. And I, as soon as it stopped raining, I just climbed down and ran back over here. And uh, I pushed three deer back into the woods, so hopefully I didn't screw myself there, but we'll see. Um, I mean, I, I really don't think that deer's going to come this way. Um, but you never know. I mean, this is obviously part of his core, because um, he was just 500 yards to my north, and my trail camera pictures of him are 200 yards to my south, and where I spotted him in August or July is about a mile and a half south. Um, so, I mean, obviously this is part of his core. This is where he's comfortable. Um, I know other people definitely are on this buck. Like I said, it's the biggest one I know about. That's an eight point. There's a pretty nice 10 around too. He's not nearly as tall as this one though. This one's, he's got, I would say 12 inch tines, um, kickers on him. He's got an extra little thing coming off the inside of his left beam out past his G3, I think, and uh, he doesn't have amazing brow tines, but uh, he's an amazing buck. I mean, he's gotta be in the 150s, 160s, probably 160s easy, I'd say, maybe better. But uh, we have a lineage of that kind of deer in this area. My brother shot a similar buck in 2006 with, I don't know, I think his biggest tine was 14 inches, and he had at least one brow tine that was 10 or 12. Uh, I don't know what that buck scored, probably the 160s, non-typical. Oh, we got some deer walking across the field here. Check it out. And now we got some beautiful color going on. It is just gorgeous out here. Sun's starting to set. Super orange out. It's really cool. Deer still love this field. They're all over it. So we're gonna stick it out for another hour. See what happens. 45 minutes. Whenever I get dark. Whenever I can't see my pens. It just generally precedes legal light. So beautiful out now. We've pushed into November now, and there has been no sign of the buck I hit nearly a month ago. Other bucks have now gained my attention, yet that one rules my mind. 
All I can do is check trail cameras, put myself in a stand and wait. The rut is here.